Hi everybody, this is Trey with Veris Technologies, and today we're going to do a brief overview of the uh, Microsoft Office 365 OWA, or Outlook Web Access. It's the tool used to access your email, calendar, contacts, etc. Um, directly in your web browser, as opposed to through Outlook, for example, or Apple Mail or Microsoft Mail. Okay, unless you have another shortcut you've been given, uh, which some people have that set up, um, the standard place you can always log in is login.microsoftonline.com. You can always go there, and it'll give you this page uh, to log in. You put in your email address that you've been given and your password. And you may have two-factor authentication turned on. There may be other things, but this is just the default for our demo account. Um, I personally always say no here, but you can uh, you can stay signed in for longer periods of time depending upon how your organization is set up. Okay, and you may your screen will be different potentially or definitely uh, depending upon what you have access to. You might have access to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you know, Office up in the cloud in your web browser, and we'll do some other videos on that. Um, if you have OneDrive, you have files stored up in the cloud at Office 365. But today, again, we're just going to focus on Outlook for the web. So you click on Outlook, and it'll open a new tab. So for this session, you could close off, you know, your first tab of logging in. And this is kind of the default view. Um, as when you set up a new account or when an administrator sets up a new mailbox for you. And we're going to make some changes because I don't personally like the focused inbox and I don't like conversation view. I prefer just good old fashioned list of emails and messages. So first thing we're going to do is go up to the gear on the top right and click on settings. And actually, I did already turn off focused inbox. That's right. So that's already off. But if, if it were on by default, you could turn it off here. Um, conversation view, I turn that off. And there's a whole bunch of other, I kind of prefer compact viewing. Um, but, you know, we'll kind of leave it the defaults for now. There's, there's a lot of settings in here, um, some of which we'll go over but we're not going to go over all of them. The common settings that we get asked about are signatures and uh, out of office. So we'll click on view Outlook settings. And under mail, um, let's see, there's automatic replies. And this is your, your out of office settings. So you could set a date range. You know, I'm going to be out of the office next week. So I'll do Monday through uh, Friday, and you could block your calendar from invitations, and you could type your uh, message here. This is for people who are inside your company, and then you can have a different message for people outside of the company. I personally tend to use the same message, but you can set it however you would like. I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. Um, and your email signature is in the compose and reply area. And you can just type whatever you want for your uh, email here, or for your email signature. And it does have some formatting for highlighting and bold and colors. And you could go compose it in like Microsoft Word, for example, and then just paste it in here, whatever you want. And then there's some options on various things and uh, re related to defaults and some replying. But anyway, we're focusing on your signature there. This is where you do that. So I'm going to discard that. And that's pretty much it for the options for mail right now. OK, so general navigation is you've got these, these groups of things over here. Um, folders is what most people are used to in Outlook, um, and you have your favorite folders up top. 
and then any groups you're a member of down below. So we'll focus on folders. And let's say you wanted a folder for your vendor emails. You, you would right click on your inbox and do create new subfolder. And just type what you want and hit enter. And so there it is. Um, I personally operate up in the favorites area. So I want my client folder. I'm gonna right click that and choose add to favorites. And my vendor folder, I'm gonna right click and choose add to favorites. Now I can collapse folders and so my favorites area here is a little bit cleaner. You know what I kind of and clients are important so I want to move that up to the top and I'll put my vendors below there. Um, now looking in my inbox here, okay here's a, here's an email. Uh, this is from a vendor. I wouldn't normally keep this but just for purposes of the demonstration um, you could just click and drag it over to the vendors area, the vendors folder. And here's another one. Let's, uh, let's do it a different way. Here's a little quick button to move to. I can move it and it'll go, this is a recently used list. So I'll just move that to vendors. And here's a test message from myself, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the clients folder. So I haven't done that recently. So if I click here, I don't see clients. So I'll choose move to a different folder. And it gives me all my folders there and choose clients. And now when I go into this message, this area, there's clients because it was recently used. I can move that one. Okay, so you can see over here, now I've still got two unread messages in clients and vendors. When I go in there, there are those messages. So it's just like working in Outlook. Uh, maybe the clicking is a little different and maybe the view is a little bit different, but it's the same concepts. Um, this is all existing on the servers at Microsoft Office 365. So as soon as you log out and you go to some other computer on the, anywhere in the world, and log back in, it'll be exactly the same. Um, let's for these messages here, uh, as an example, you can right click on the folder and mark all as red. And so now they're marked as red. So um, sending an email is the same as you're used to in Outlook. Uh, it may, yes, again, look a little bit different, uh, uh, but you know, your two field, if you want a blind carbon copy, you click that to enable the blind carbon copy line. Uh, carbon copy, you can just type and it'll pull from your contacts and recently used email addresses, or you can click to actually browse your contacts and your directories. Subject line. Now, this is one thing that is a little bit different that um, a lot of people, it takes some getting used to. You can't drag and drop attachments into the email. You have to use the click and browse. Um, you can either just attach files directly, um, browse your computer and pick a PDF and attach it, or, for example, uh, or you can insert pictures uh, in line. If you're going to put a picture right here and have it display in the email, you would insert pictures and it comes to your computer and you can pick things and attach them. Uh, you can also set your sensitivity levels on the messages. If they're confidential, those are customizable. Um, uh, the three dots gives you the uh, like the high, low importance levels. Um, you can save a draft. I mean, it's, it's very, very similar to Outlook um, that's installed on a computer, but it exists fully up in the cloud. Okay, let's discard that test message. The other thing that everybody works with, uh, in general, with Outlook, is the calendar and contacts. So it is called the calendar in Office 365, but it's called people in Office 365 instead of contacts. So I'm going to use the control key on my keyboard and click the calendar. And what that's going to do is open it in a new tab. You can see up here. I'm going to go ahead and control click the people also. 
and then I'll do it in a new tab. Uh, if you just click it, it navigates away from your email. So this kind of gives you a way to exist, you know, with all of your information uh, at one time in multiple tabs in your browser. Okay, so this calendar is, um, it's going to be whatever you set up as far as do you want it to look like all seven days? Do you want it to, you could change it to be just your work week. So it's just Monday through Friday, or you can customize your work week. Um, or you can look at the whole month, um, you know, and it'll have a little summary on what's going on on the current day. So you could browse around and play around. There's a couple of things that I wanted to show. What, for example, you can add someone else's calendar in your organization. And so I clicked on the add calendar link on the left. I'm going to add from our directory. That means people in my company. And you could just start typing or it may automatically fill if you've recently been typing in there. And where do you want to put the calendar? You know what? Uh, I kind of like it in a different, this is the grouping over here on the left. Uh, I'm going to put it in the system generated group called people's calendars. Um, and you click add, it'll say import, and then that's done. So I'm going to, let's see, what other holidays, you know, what? you could, let's pick a sports team real quick. Just, I don't know what's going to happen with this, but you could go add uh, some yeah, we'll put a calendar on there called All NBA Games and see what that does. Right now, we're in the middle of a you know the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, so I don't know what that's going to show up as, but you've got some other options here you can see. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything on the NBA calendar, um, so we'll turn that off. But you can see this added, this other calendar down here in green. So here it is on my... Uh, my current view, uh, and you know what? I just I don't like green, so I'm going to change that to um, whatever this uh, magenta. There we go. Uh, so you've got some options there to change for colors. Um, you could look at that person's calendar just by itself by turning your calendar off. Um, under the view on the top right here, you can go to split view so that you could see them side by side instead of in overlay mode. Uh, you can't do side by side in a full month view. It's it just won't let you because there's too much screen. Uh, it will do it in overlay mode only. So, um, okay. So if you if you scroll to the next week, you know then you've got the person's uh, additional meetings and your meetings. And you just click where you want to add an appointment. You can either just click once and do a quick appointment uh, and hit enter. There you go. And now you can change it up if you want. You can move it around to different days. You can move it to different times. Uh, if you double click, then you've got the full interface with reminder settings and um, uh, repeat options for repeat meetings. Um, and you can look at other people's um, uh, calendar, you know, free busy information here. Uh, so if we add in someone else in your organization that you have access to their free busy information, then you can see that for planning your meetings, et cetera. So it should, it should, if you're familiar with doing these things in Outlook, it should be familiar. Um, not necessarily exactly the same, but it should be familiar. Um, so let's go ahead and cancel this meeting here um, and discard it. Okay, so that's kind of a brief overview of the calendar stuff. Again, you do have options just like in mail uh, for your calendar. If you click on the gear in the top right, um, you know, dark mode is going to be for the entire area. The whole, these settings are for everything, but you can change your time zone, your date format. Um, I like 24 hour time, so I have it on time format. Um, if you click on again on the view outlook settings, 
and you'll be in that section for calendar. You've got a whole bunch of pieces of things here that you can change. Um, you know, you want to make sure you see the weather. Uh, uh, and automatically processing things from your email uh, onto your calendar. And so you can play around with those settings. But that's g in general the calendar interface. Okay, and the last thing we're going to go over is the contacts or people interface. Uh, again, it should be familiar, uh, but not exactly the same. Um, the the your contacts that's the area where you will have all of your contacts if we migrated them or if you migrated them or that's where you save them uh, and those you know synchronize down to your mobile devices be it iPhones or Androids or or iPads or if you use Outlook uh, for a mobile device and it's pretty simple um, and again similar to Outlook uh, if you double click a contact. Um, I'm not quite sure why it's not opening there, but we'll just, okay, we'll click the edit button here. Um, you, it, it's going to keep a minimal interface. So you kind of look at this and go, gosh, why can I only save this information? Well, you add the fields that you want. So I want to go ahead and put in a business address. Um, and it, it, it will it will display it when when you use it um, and so we can go add another phone uh, let's add the mobile phone okay so that all is there and when you uh, click on these tabs as you fill it out or as you use the system more and send this user email it'll start filtering the email in this view it's just kind of kind of a nice interface there I I use the searching with an email but you can see it there any files they've shared with you and your organization could be there but um, all of your contacts will appear here and uh, it's it really the issue here that most people run into is there isn't a place called contacts in the navigation down below, it's people. Um, so that's pretty much it for contacts. Um, okay, so back in the email uh, area, I think that's pretty much all that we're gonna go over for today. Um, if you are a member of a shared mailbox, for example, um, uh, companies will have one called accounting or billing or HR. Um, you access those by going to your profile picture in the top right, which may be blank if you haven't assigned a picture yet, but it's in the top right and you click on that and you click on open another mailbox. And you would type whatever it was. We don't have any set up in our demo environment right now but you would type whatever the mailbox is and then hit OK and it would open up another tab that would look exactly the same as this but it would be that mailbox that you're opening up uh, and we'll do another video that's for you working with shared mailboxes um, okay but that's pretty much it for the demonstration of working with your email and your calendar and your contacts or people in Office 365 um, in the Outlook web access interface. Any questions, just uh, email us at uh, help at verustech.com if you're a customer. And if you're not, you can contact us anyway um, to get assistance. Thanks and have a good day.